Good morning, folks. We've got large earthquakes, weather, volcanoes, magnetic anomalies, and other top science news. We are starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day very calm, very quiet. We can see the umbral magnetic fields of the incoming active region on the left side, coronal holes mostly confined to the polar region, as is common in sunspot minimum. While the excitement is building over the return of the active region we saw turn away from Earth two weeks ago, there has been no eruptive behavior from it thus far. The spots appear to have achieved considerable stability during their cross of the far side. Sunspots will be properly visible as we enter the weekend. Moving on next to the solar wind. We are inside the coronal hole stream from the recently departed openings. Plasma stream plateaued below 600 kilometers per second, so it is a moderate to weak stream. Only brief instability met while the stream began its impact. About 90 minutes ago, we saw El Salvador take a large 6.6 .6 earthquake. They are currently revising the depth of this event to be a bit deeper. We also saw an incredibly rare quake strike Australia, probably only a handful like this down under in the entire time we've been reporting. Staying beneath our feet, Ethiopian fissures continue to appear according to local sources, ongoing about two years now. Also had a small eruption overnight at Mount Etna. It was a small effusive eruption and is pretty much over this morning, but alert is raised for more. The number of tornadoes that have dropped in the United States is incredible this month. It's 2011 all over again, but with eight years of steroids apparently. Tonight the risk will split between the mid-Atlantic and the southeastern end of the Rockies near Texas. Let's begin the science news with a look ahead to the James Webb Telescope and its next level ability to see exoplanets. Beyond the traditional methods for exoplanet detection, between James Webb and TESS, we should be soon up into the tens of thousands of confirmed exoplanets, provided they ever launch the thing. Up next, we're at Mars with footage of the clouds from the rover. Somewhat asinine, if I may, that these are black and white, basically begging for people to accuse them of filming in Arizona. But alas, it supposedly stumbled upon a tremendous bounty of clay that they believe was formed at the presence of water, and they are hoping to find microbial remains. Warwick reports the discovery of an exoplanet that orbits in less than two days, is over a thousand degrees Celsius, and is about three times the size of Earth. Such large, rocky planets are not supposed to exist that close in. Want to drop a link to the second release from the Hyper Supreme mission? Images here might look grainy and old, but this is a mega zoom into a tiny black region between the known stars in deep space. Turns out it's not so black, just more stuff. Last but not least, the new magnetic anomaly map for Earth has been released by NOAA. This is by far the most highly detailed and high definition magnetic anomaly map we've ever seen. These maps have use for geological history and understanding things like where space weather impact may be most effective. Once the global electric circuit science is better understood, we are going to be likely to find that tornado tracks and even earthquake events can be studied from a crustal magnetism perspective. For those with the disaster prediction app, we hope the upgrades were a nice surprise this week. We'd love a good review on the app stores. And for everyone else, those new server-driven price increases happen tonight. I have held off keeping this low for you guys, but our costs have begun their surge, so get in now. This is now an advanced app. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.